Aquaman is a character whose reputation has generally gotten the short end of the stick for a majority of his existence. He's been around since 1941, appearing primarily in adventure comics until the 60s when he would be put into more titles. At the time, the 60s and 70s would be a good period for the character, but it unfortunately had a long-lasting negative effect. The first big leap for Aquaman would be his inclusion in the Justice League of America book, and him even getting his own title that ran from 1962 to 71, and then a very brief stint from 77 to 78. The end of the 60s gave him his first media adaptation, being part of the Superman Aquaman Hour of Adventure. Aquaman, King of the Seven Seas. This blog combines installments of the pre-existing shows The New Adventures of Superman and The Adventures of Superboy with a new series for Aquaman. This series would also air in rerun format later on throughout the century. His next big appearance would be in the iconic Super Friends cartoon. The show aired on ABC for a little over a decade between the mid-70s and mid-80s. With the limited amount of networks around at the time, there were few options that kids had for cartoons and just for watching TV in general. So due to the success of the series, this is what would become synonymous with Aquaman for a whole generation or two generations at that. At the time, of course, that is a good thing, but hindsight showed that the takeaway a lot of people had from this cartoon is that Aquaman was just a lame character that could do nothing but really summon fish and maybe stop whatever random underwater crime would be going on. After not being incorporated into the last iteration of the show, Aquaman would have a pretty rough rest of the 80s. Comics-wise, after his solo series ended with that brief stint in the late 70s, he would only be featured mostly in the Justice League book itself or in random team-ups. Even after Crisis on Infinite Earths, he would only manage to get a few miniseries and a short 13-issue long run to his name. The early 90s were where things began to turn around again for the character, though. Writer Peter David got his hands on the lore with the Chronicles of Atlantis miniseries, and this led to another miniseries starring the character proper, which would then kick off an ongoing title that ran for 75 issues from 1994 to 2000. This builds on the lore of Atlantis established in the Atlantis Chronicles, as well as picking up where all the miniseries and prior 13-issue run left off. In this run, there's encounters with deities and more oceanic lore than most pre-crisis stories that Aquaman had did. Here is also where his sort of famous harpoon hand made its debut along with the metal armor design that he had plus an overall more gritty attitude because, of course, it was the 90s. Though despite the gritty attitude and more grim take on the character, there is still plenty of levity that is brought in with humor that you have with many of Peter David's runs. This is also the title that would make the more then-obscure character Dolphin a relative mainstay in the Aquaman sphere of characters. Alongside this run, Aquaman would be featured in the beloved JLA series that was kicked off by Grant Morrison in the mid-90s. And he would make his debut in the DCAU with an appearance on a Superman animated series. The 2000s would go on to be a very mixed and interesting period for the character. The comics would lean more into the magic side of Aquaman's history than the prior 90s run. The story would overall get a much more fantasy adventure-like feel to it. And we would have the introduction of Arthur's magic water hand replacing his harpoon hand. Some of the other notable additions from this period of the book were the creation of Sub Diego kind of becoming Aquaman's main area of focus. This is also the era where Black Manta's autism origin comes from, for better or worse. To me, a lot of this period just feels very off. It kind of comes off like after the run in the 90s, DC didn't really have an idea of what they wanted Aquaman to be. So they sort of just let the writers go on and do their thing, and since it was Aquaman, it wasn't a high priority for the publisher. So the story kind of just meanders all over the place throughout this run. The run comes to a somewhat sudden stop and picks up after the one year later storyline where Arthur is missing, and he is replaced by a human with somewhat similar powers. This human is the main character for the then Aquaman book, Sword of Atlantis. Arthur is eventually found, but he does end up dying. He's resurrected in the Blackest Night, Brightest Day Green Lantern storyline, and then the New 52 happens. Meanwhile, when all of this is happening in the books, Arthur is getting the most media exposure he's ever had up to this point. The DCAU continues on with him having appearances in Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. His look is that similar to Peter David's design with the harpoon hand and a slightly more armored look to him, and as well with the beard. 
Sticking with animation, he also goes on to be in Batman Brave and the Bold, where he becomes a recurring character, as well as being a fan favorite, keeping in line with the inspiration from the Silver Age that Brave and the Bold had. This version of Aquaman is much more lighthearted and kind of jokey, although he did have times of being more serious. Aquaman, what is it? I need to be rescued from this blasted vacation. Not a good time. In the mid-2000s on the CW, there was a live-action pilot for an Aquaman series similar to that of Smallville. In this series, future Smallville Green Arrow Justin Hartley would be playing the title role of the character, shortened for AC, I guess because they didn't want to call somebody Arthur Curry. Morning, AC. The pilot would be passed on, but Warner Brothers made it available to purchase on iTunes, Xbox Live, and on physical media as well. Meanwhile, actually, on the CW, Aquaman would appear in four episodes of Smallville. Being played by future Titans actor Alan Richson, Aquaman would be sporting a costume that is somewhat comic accurate, but not entirely, which is very status quo for Smallville. Similar to the pilot, he is also referred to as AC in this show. AC, we need to talk. I guess that's something the CW just really wanted to hold on to. On the gaming side of things, Aquaman became one of the few DC characters who isn't Batman or Superman to get a solo video game, which was indeed playable. He would also be featured as a sporting character in multiple games throughout the decade, like DC Universe Online. Of course, going back to the TV side of things, he would be featured usually as a punchline in shows like Family Guy, Robot Chicken, uh, he'd be referenced at least in shows like Big Bang Theory, usually regarding how lame he is, stuff like that. You have the parody version of him in Spongebob, that being Mermaid Man. I'm right here! Don't worry, good citizens! The 2010s would arrive and would bring another level for Aquaman to ascend to. On the comic side of things, DC had its new 52 reboot slash soft reboot, depending on who you ask and when you ask. Like many characters, Aquaman was given his own title to start off the relaunch, and this title would be one of the more mainstay ones throughout it. The start of the run would be kicked off by one of the publisher's biggest writers, that being Jeff Johns. Johns presented somewhat of a clean slate for readers both old and new to jump onto. Johns would be on the title for the first 24 issues, which ended up being the more influential and memorable ones for many readers as well as DC themselves those being the Trench and Throne of Atlantis arcs. The series would continue on through the Rebirth era, with writers like Colin Bunn picking up after Jeff Johns and eventually Dan Abnett having a very solid run picking up at the end of the New 52 and carrying through the first quarter or first half or so of the Rebirth era. Even though he hasn't had his own solo title following the conclusion of Rebirth, he's made multiple appearances both in other people's books and in miniseries where he is either the lead or co-lead. Meanwhile, in Adaptation Land, he was one of the recurring characters in the first run of the Young Justice cartoon, teaming alongside the semi-original character for the TV show, Aqualad, aka Jackson Hyde. He's appeared a few times over the course of Teen Titans Go, my favorite being where he is voiced by Patrick Warburton. I realize now that we're going to have to settle this like men of the ocean. He's been in the Harley Quinn series on HBO Max or Max, whatever you want to call it now. He also had his own miniseries on the platform as well. Arthur also continued to be a supporting character in multiple video games throughout the decade, ranging from the LEGO Batman or LEGO series in general to fighters like the Injustice series. Arthur also became a more reoccurring character in the animated film portions of the DC products. He had been in a handful during the 2000s, but things really picked up for him when DC started adapting the new 52 runs into animated movies. In what's technically his first appearance in this continuity, he is in the Flashpoint adaptation where he is voiced by Carrie Elways of all people. In the follow-up films like their adaptation of the Throne of Atlantis arc and their retelling of Death of Superman, he's voiced by Anakin Skywalker himself, Matt Lanter. Aquaman would make his big screen debut in this decade, technically his first appearance being in the 2016 film Batman vs Superman, which is more of a glorified cameo more than anything. In this continuity, he is played by Jason Momoa, who would get a greater time to shine in the 2017 Justice League film. 
Following the Just Sleek film, he would go on to have his own solo movie, which would make way more money than anybody ever expected. The film would adapt the two big story arcs that I mentioned before, The Trench and The Throne of Atlantis, with a little bit of the other storyline sprinkled in throughout. Directed by James Wan, the movie would star, of course, Jason Momoa, Willem Dafoe, Amber Heard, Patrick Wilson, my man Dolph Lundgren, Yahya Abdul-Mateen, Tamar Morrison, and Nicole Kidman. It was at this point where your mom and the average Joe on the street could really change their tune on Aquaman. A lot of people would start to say that he was somewhat cool or maybe even cool, but again, I think this is more just the Jason Momoa effect more than people actually appreciating the character. This iteration of the character kind of has more of that 90s look and feel to it, mostly because Jason Momoa is playing him. We have the beard and the long hair and a more armor-like look to him, although he does get the traditional costume later on in the movie. Spoilers if you haven't seen it for whatever reason. It's a fun adventure movie that isn't really afraid to shy away from the source material, and I think that's what James Wan really works with. He's really good at adapting what is the essence of the character and putting it on screen, at least when WB allows him to. The movie also gives you Julie Andrews as the Kraken, and that's just, that's just fun to me. And for a thousand years, I have seen the greatest champions try and fail. Moving into the 2020s, he does have a sequel to his solo film, which I have yet to see as of this recording. And like I said earlier, he doesn't have a solo title of his own, but he has appeared multiple times either in miniseries or making appearances in other people's books. In the end, Aquaman will never be on the level of icon or important status as Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. And the jokes will probably never go away entirely. But at least DC has shown they're able to not let the character be defined by just the jokes. Going into 2024, the character has been built up to easily the best position he's ever been in, and I definitely look forward to where he will go in the future. Thank you for watching or listening to this. If you like this video, there is plenty of things similar to it on the channel here. There are videos about Batman, Superman, DC, Marvel, Star Wars, novels and comics for Star Wars, what have you. So like, subscribe, all the fun algorithm boosting stuff, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Hey! Hey! Hey, let her go! Oh, uh, what? Or... or... I don't know, man, but you're... you're lucky you're not doing that over here, in the ocean!